Hello everyone and welcome back to this game number two of the round one match between Indy Pride and J Tran Leopard. Indy Pride is the designated attacker and map chooser. He has chosen a slumbering settlement in the winter time. Of course, the weather effects are applicable for the map chooser and choose whatever he wants. That brings me up as, uh, brings up a certain point. Uh, when you are choosing a map, there are two ways to think about your map. You can think uh, I want something offensive that will enable my army to do something, or defensive that will keep his army from doing something as well. We got ru rushing out quite uh, early. Leopard brings pretty much the same army he had in the last battle, a katana core, very standard. Um, Indy Pride brings a, er, a, yeah, a big cavalry component. We got two great guard and Yari cavalry. He's got a couple of bow cavalry as well, maybe trying to force Leopard into an early engagement. The Leopard does have those bow warrior monks that he'll be able to counteract bow cavalry fairly well. We also see over here a light cavalry and two Kisho ninjas, maybe trying to lure a Yari cavalry into the Kisho bombs. Nope, guess not. He's pulling back. Another Kisho ninja is off over here too. So Indy Pride is going to go for that wide sort of formation, maybe try to envelop uh, Leopard like he did in the first battle, maybe with some skirmishing, catch him off guard, maybe uh, flank with those Kisho ninjas. Ninjas. Looks like we had a little bit of an engagement here. Yes, we did. Um, Leopard came out a little bit ahead, only losing five men, where Indy Pride lost about nine with his light cavalry. I guess if you think about it like that, though, Yari cavalry are more uh, useful than the light cavalry. Bow Warrior Monk's doing it. Ooh, he's doing a nice job. I'd maybe put him in loose formation here if you're skirmishing with a Bow Warrior Monk, but um, still not going to take very many casualties. He actually hasn't lost any men on his Bow Cavalry. This Bow Warrior Monk's down a few. Is at 79 or 69 men right now out of 75 and I think yeah Leopard's army is exactly the same as it was unless he has an ambush in hiding uh, we'll see oh he actually captured the workshop too so um, he's gonna have that little bit of advantage especially helps in the skirmish battle because you get the armor upgrade which means that you're going to be able to take those arrows that much better in fact how much of an armor upgrade was that there are four right now armor on the bow warrior monks now it looks like indy pride's crabbing a little bit with his cavalry of course i think they were already seen um so leopard knows where they're there but hopefully um he might forget that they are there uh, which one thing you can do good well with cavalry if you put them off in the trees hopefully your enemy forgets and then you can get a an ambush off there that you really don't deserve Really nice micro here in the skirmish battle. Lost four men here in his bow cavalry. He might even be charging into melee. He is. That bow cavalry, like I always say, they may not have a great charge, but they're still cavalry. In fact, we can take a look. Charge bonus of 10. That's still a pretty good charge bonus. Down to 30, yeah, especially against bows. Down to 30 men. He's just going to take out that bow warrior monk. And only lost a few men. This bow cavalry is still at 48. So actually a great move there. Caught the bow warrior monks out of position. Yari cavalry is going to chase him off, but the damage has been done. Oh, it looks like he's bringing some great guard of his own in this battle. Looks like I only see one right now. Is that one too? No, it looks like he only has one great guard. In fact, uh-oh, I think he only has one bow warrior monk, which has now been taken down to 20 men. is going to be near useless. Now, of course, Indy Pride is a designated attacker in this battle, so he'll have to be moving his units up. Uh, or at least be moving to flank to gain a favorable position. Looks like he's doing that. I'm not going to be a huge stickler on that rule. It's just something to be there just in case someone really camps hardcore. Um, we can deal with it. Let's see, moving out again with this bow cavalry. Still in great shape, 44 and 58 men. He's going to be able to harass the Dickens out of Leopard, who has got nothing to respond to that besides these 20 monks. He can try and run him off of this Yari cavalry. That's about all he can do with Indy Pride's cavalry sitting off in the forest. And his Kisho Ninjas as well. Wonder what he's going to do with those Kisho Ninjas. Did he actually... He had a third one, did he? Yeah, he ended up moving him back to his line. He actually, I missed it. It looks like he got damaged a little bit. He's at 23 men. Uh, it must have been the Great Guard. Yeah, it must have been the Great Guard that caught him around there. Bow Cavalry moving in and out. Maybe trying to harass uh, Leopard into a an engagement. See, even if you're an infantry man and a melee man like me, you don't want to neglect your missile force because if the enemy has a missile advantage, he can control the terrain and control the battle, basically forcing you into an attack. Um, oh, even though Indy Pride is the designated attacker, these missile attacks, you can't just sit there. Uh, if you're getting hit by missile attacks, you aren't just going to want to take it. Uh, you need to to stop it somehow, and he might be forced into an attack right here. But he's going to be walking right into Indy Pride's plan. Uh, though it does look like he has this cavalry sitting off on the side, which is good. Cavalry on anti-cavalry duty. Because his infantry line is not as strong as it was in the last one, let's see, four, four katanas and two nodachis with a few Yariashi Garu as support. Not quite as strong as we saw in the, in the first match, but, uh, especially without that match lock and bow support, but 
still a formidable force. These six veteran katanas uh, could definitely pull the melee battle in their favor if the Nodachis don't get off a good charge, and if he avoids getting caught in a melee battle with the Yari Ashigaru and Spearwall. Now we see a, a, a cav cavalry attack coming here on the flank, sending almost all of his cavalry in and the Kisho Ninja, who have activated stealth and are running. I don't believe that. Yeah, they definitely have been seen. Uh, so not going to get any kind of stealthy attack. Oh, his cavalry is going to get pinned down here by the Yari Shigaru and Prize moving out to attack, though the Great Guard is still flanking. Uh, and in fact, there's not much here to stop him, except these two Yari Ashigaru, which he could definitely flank. No problem. And the battle has started. The Nodachis have come in. Oh, they're getting torn apart down to 100 men already. The Katanas did not take that bad of a charge. They're down to about 100 men right now, so they withstood the original charge. But warrior monks are fighting. Yari Shigaru is just ten, trying to guard the general. Oh, but the light cavalry. Ooh, bombs are going off somewhere. Where are the bombs? Didn't quite see them. The Yari cavalry is going to try and hit the general, but they're going to run right in the... Oh, excuse me, light cavalry. There's all the bombs going off, but it looks like they're not doing too much except to rout Indy's own men. Yari Ashigaru holding quite well. We have a nice little grinded out battle going here, which could work in, in Leopard's favor. We see wavering along his main line here. The Nodachis are gone. Uh, but the katanas are now going to start moving up into uh, a dedicated attack. Yari Ashigaru not in spear. Oh, they are in spear wall, guarding the rear. Indy Pride's cavalry is also trying to flank and hit the general, and just going to bypass the Yari Ashigaru. Uh, Leper's going to miss that attack. He didn't stand to fight though, and they're not going to hit the general. They're going into the melee line. Take a look at the morale. Still in the green, though. Uh, confident at about 70 men, but that charge is going to kill quite a few. Ooh, but look at this. Actually, Leopard's going to have a little blanket action going on here with the Yari Ashigaru coming from the rear to maybe clean up the cavalry. But they are hit from the rear of the cavalry, so it's not looking good right now. Katana Samurai over on this side are holding for the moment, uh, but being flanked by Katana Samurai and Yari Ashigaru, that will surely crumble. We see Wavering. Definitely closer than the first battle, but it looks like Indy Pride's going to take this one. Wavering along the main line here for both sides. This Katana Samurai is still in good shape. Rank 4 veteran. Down to 39. There's the war cry from the Naginata Monk. And that's going to send the Wavering down in the red morale. General's still fine though in stand and fight. Only lost one man. But the flanking by the Yari Ashigaru is going to be the shock troop that's going to clean this one up. There goes one Indy Pride's unit. So it's going to be close. But Indy Pride definitely has an advantage with these Kisho Ninjas. Oh, look at that. Bombs hitting the General of Leopard. Didn't do t kill too many. They're going to get up from those bombs. And eh, no problem. Just shrug those bombs off. No big deal. But in the meantime, there has been routing on Leopard's line. Still holding a little bit strong on this side. And there's the last of the units getting routed. Definitely closer than the first battle. Great battle there. A lot of fun to watch. The bow is that bow cavalry? Yes, it is. Getting into melee here with the general down to seven men. Going to be able to clean that up. And looks like Indy Pride's going to take the series two to nothing. Moving on in the winners bracket. Congratulations to Indy Pride, Leopard. You are not out of this yet. Going down to the losers bracket, but you can still claw your way back up to the top. So I'll see you back on the main menu for some post match analysis. Thanks for watching, everybody. Well, what a great first match of this competition. J-Tran Leopard versus Indy Pride. Indy Pride takes the series 2 to nothing. No need for the third tiebreaker. And he's going to be moving on in the winner's bracket. Kind of surprising, he definitely won more convincingly in the first match where he didn't choose the map than he did in the second. Definitely close. If there had been some cavalry flanking going on uh, in that second map, I think that uh, Leopard could have easily taken that game. Um, uh, unfortunately, with a with the fewer spear units, again, he wasn't able to use his cavalry offensively. He had to use them in an anti-cavalry role, um, which is something to be very careful of when you're using spears. Really need to bring a few more so you're safe from that cavalry, because all you have to do is build that wall behind your line. If you get that wall up, the enemy cavalry won't be able to get through, and you won't have to use your cavalry defensively, which is not the optimal use of cavalry, obviously. Um, Good use of bow. I love seeing good bow cavalry micro. I'm very impatient myself. I can't do it very well. The few people that can, I really respect, and I like to see it. Uh, very patient, and just being able to pick those uh, experienced bow warrior monks apart, getting in there for that charge. Don't be afraid to sacrifice a unit if you really think it's going to pull you ahead, if it's a good trade-off. But, uh, but then now come to think of it, that wasn't really a sacrifice. I only lost a couple bows, uh, bow cavalry, and just obliterated almost that bow warrior monk. So definitely a good trade there for Indy Pride. 
great first match looking forward to the rest thanks for watching everybody please leave a comment suggestions questions uh, if you don't understand what's he talking about designated attacker what go to the steam page for the tournament you can read all the rules there you can get updates on the brackets everything like that uh, just give it a sh give us a shout comment suggestions uh, I'd love to hear from you I like getting input had to get a lot of input to put this uh, tournament together so um, I have no delusions of grandeur so please leave your opinion um, thanks for watching and see you next time. Good luck to all.